Hello students. Today's topic is Lipinski rule and certain steps in drug discovery. Lipinski rule of five. The Lipinski rule was originally conceived for formulation or development of orally bioavailable drug. It was proposed by Christopher Lipinski in 1997. It is a set of guidelines to determine the drug ability of a molecule. There are four set of rules. The determinant molecule should have first not more than five hydrogen bond donors. That is the nitrogen or oxygen atoms with one or more hydrogen atoms. This is expressed as sum of OH and NH group in the molecule. Second, not more than 10 hydrogen bond acceptors. That is nitrogen or oxygen atom in the molecule. Third, the molecular mass should be less than 500 Dalton. And lastly, the partition coefficient should not be greater than 5. This is based on octanol water partition coefficient. These four rules are physicochemical properties of a molecule to be used as a oral formulation. Note, there are only four rules but it is called the five because they are all multiples of five. Violation of two or more of these rules make the molecule non-available or for oral drug. It should also be remembered that the molecules following the Lipinski rule need not be pharmacologically active. These molecules could have a good pharmacokinetics that is a ADMA profile. Let's consider some examples. Acyclovir drug. It is an antiviral drug used to slow down the spread of herpes virus. It is a synthetic analog of guanosin. The structure is represented below. In this structure, the number of OH group in the molecule is 2 and the number of NH group is 1. Therefore, the total hydrogen donors for the molecule is 2 plus 1 which equals 3. Second, the number of oxygen atom in the molecule is 3 and the number of nitrogen atom in the molecule is 5. So the total comes to be 5 plus 3, 8. Hence, the hydrogen acceptors in the molecule is 8. The molecular weight of the molecule is 225.21 Dalton and the partition coefficient is found to be minus 1.56. This molecule thus follows the Lipinski rule of 5 and hence is active or bioavailable oral drug. Next example, aspirin. It is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug that decreases inflammation, prostaglandin levels and platelet aggregation. In this molecule, the total number of OH group is 1. Hence, total of hydrogen donors for the molecule is 1. The number of oxygen atoms in the molecule is 4. It does not have any nitrogen molecule. So the total number of hydrogen acceptors for the molecule is 4. The molecular weight of the molecule is 180 Dalton and the partition coefficient is 2.44. Hence, aspirin can be used as a oral drug. Now, Check with the anti-malarial drug chloroquinone. The Lipinski rule is used in drug discovery to
to check whether the lead molecule can be used as a bioavailable oral drug. The drug discovery and development can be divided into four stages. It is represented in the diagram below. The first phase is the drug discovery phase, which includes target identification and drug lead discovery. This is followed by the next phase, the preclinical phase, also called the phase zero. It includes characterization of the drug, its pharmacokinetic properties, ADME, and in vitro and in vivo trials to check the therapeutic response of the lead component. Next is the clinical development phase, which includes three phases, phase one, phase two, and phase three. Each phase involves an array of tests to check dosage, toxicity, and efficacy. The study of dosage, dose toxicity, short-lived side effects, and kinetic relationships are done in phase one, determination of drug performance in phase two, and comparison of the molecule to the standard of care is done in phase three. This is then followed by phase four, the pharmacovigilance stage, which includes monitoring the drug response and long-term side effects after the drug is in market. The whole process takes in about approximately 15 years. The drug discovery process involves target identification, target validation, lead identification and optimization, preclinical trials and clinical trials. The figure here summarizes the various approaches involved in each step. Identification of drug target is the first step towards drug discovery. These are specific drug binding sites in the biological system which bring about the cellular response when bound to a ligand or molecule. We have studied this in detail in our earlier classes. Drug targets involve nucleic acids, enzymes and receptors which include ion channel receptors, G protein receptors. Most of the drug designed are G protein receptors or G protein coupled receptors, example for diabetes, hypertension, several carcinoma. Target identification in modern times is done by use of computer-based softwares wherein virtual 3D images of the structure is created to bind into the binding site of the biological macromolecule. The target identification is followed by target validation. It involves demonstrating proof and confirmation of the target in the disease process and whether its modulation of target brings about the therapeutic response. It is usually done using knock-in and knock-out animal models. Many neurodegenerative disease models are developed by generating mutant genes. Another method is by use of antisense DNA, RNA, and interfering RNA. In antisense method, complementary antisense compounds bind to the target sequence forming a double strand, thereby inhibiting its action. In case of interfering RNA, gene silencing is done. After the drug target is identified and validated, a look for candidate or molecules that can bind to the target site is initiated. The lead compound is a prototype drug which would require optimization. Traditionally, it was done by trial and error method, wherein random screening of compounds were done or by serendipitous method. 
I had talked in detail about this in my previous class. The other methods involve synthesis and isolation of the molecule, high throughput screening or HTS method, structural activity relationship by combinatorial chemistry, rational methods and from database and data collection. Lead identification can be done by synthesis in, in vitro and by isolation of biosynthetic intermediates. For this, information regarding biological pathways such as gene and protein expression, modulation and regulation, and cell signaling should be known. The HTS method. Once the therapeutic target has been selected, Linking the target with a specific biological mechanism for drug action provides the focus for discovery. To achieve this goal, it is necessary to identify relevant biological assays. HTS allows testing of large number of to be supposed potent chemical or biological compounds for the specific biological target. It is performed in large numbers at one set itself. Example, in 96 well formats or 1536 well formats together. From the supposed hit components with attractive pharmaceutical properties, compounds which have low toxicity, membrane permeability and genotoxicity can be identified. These compounds are then called leads. In the conventional method, hits have been found by screening, while in this method, leads are developed from hits by chemical synthesis. Hence, it is also called as hit to lead method. Lead identification by structure activity relationship. SAR involves the synthesis of a series of structurally related chemical compounds and testing each one of them to determine its pharmacological activity. Lead compounds can be identified by combinatorial chemistry or by database or data collection. Combinatorial chemistry involves synthesis of an array of structurally diverse components called a chemical library through a systematic, repetitive and covalent linkage of various building blocks. The compounds identified are screened parallelly for individual interactions with biological targets of interest. Next. Database collection and data collections. This is by study of the NMR and X-ray data of the molecule, publication or research work studies, patents and works on biological activity. The rational method of designing involves two major types ligand based drug designing and structure based drug designing we'll study about this in detail later lead molecule optimization method can be done by sar method or by computer aided method this aims in synthesizing the compounds new analogs with improved potency reduce side effects, increase selectivity and stability. Once the chemical identity of the lead compound is discovered, drug development process starts. It involves two stages, preclinical and clinical studies. Preclinical studies include animal studies which are done for toxicity study, IDME studies, and 
therapeutic doses. We have done all this studies in detail in our earlier sessions. Next class, we'll start with the clinical phases in drug development. Thank you.